Mm -hmm. I just I just wanted to say what an absolute privilege it is for each one of us to have had Daddy in our lives. And really, he, he's one of the most beloved people that, you know, I still, you know, still love him and think of him all the time. And I just wanted to say that he, what he, what he did for me, he's done special things for all of you. The great thing he did for me is to treat me as his oldest child, like a, a boy kid. And, <laughs> and he took me hunting with him, and he took me canoeing, and he took me taking down duck boxes in the ponds and mountain climbing. And he did it with all of us, but, but it was so wonderful to be raised without, it's a girl. <laughs> no, he never that did that. early gender stuff. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And she did. The, he did the same with Jesse. So and, <clears throat> and then Spencer grew up so that he could take over. And by the time you took over, I got interested in boys. Anyway, I'm glad you did. <laughs> yeah. But but it was he was the most democratic man in politically in correct. every way. No, in, in, no, in every way. I mean, I, I for instance, I'll just a quick reminder when he and his best friend Billy Sheldon went collecting for the Smithsonian up in British Columbia. And they packed in and they had their own, you know, they were collecting all the way up to the sheep head. And they had Indian, they had Canadian guides, Indian guides. And he said, he told me, he said, we made absolutely a point of not letting be known that one of us went to Harvard and the other went to Yale. I mean, they were, <laughs> it would have spoiled the, the relationships that he had with the, with the guides, and I think, to be, I mean, that was when he was 20-something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's he was He was an equal <coughs> He was, he, and he made everybody feel that they were exactly um, in they front of him and they all wonderful. Each other. And I remember a black guide in Africa when we were there who came up to the table we were sitting at, Brown, Brownie will probably remember this too, and he comes up and he says, Master Dick, let me come be your, your he almost said slave in, in, slave in, in America. Oh. I mean, he was sort of offering himself to Dad. I mean, Daddy had that charisma. He capacity. He charisma, too. exactly. Yeah. Everybody loved him, dear. Yes, we. we Everybody. We and look at us, aren't we lucky? We were yeah. the closest. You are lucky. You're the lucky ones. Yes. Well, I'm always so made happy a point to be of saying, here, here, I don't Jane. care what any here, here. of you do. I don't yes. care what you do as long as you love what you do and as long as you do it well. Right. Do whatever you want to do. Sure. You don't have to be anything in particular. Just love what you do and do it well. Right. Well, he did that in spades. Um, uh, along the lines, I mean, it's, it's, he did the same thing to you that he did to me. Um, and I was nine years old. Okay, you coming? Yeah. Or you're not coming? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're coming? Okay. Then, and thus, I followed him around like a collie with one eye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, up a tree and down. Uh, it, uh, I remember he'd show me um, movies of you and Betsy in, uh, in a canoe going down. Um, the uh, White River. Uh, yes, exactly. The White the, River. Uh, with the, with the, the, geese. the two geese following you down yeah, the, the canal. He did his he did his very best. He had some very early injuries to his heart. He did? His soul. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I mean he lost his brother. Oh, oh yes. and, and mother. And his mother. And his mother. And all in very short order. And then he decided Excuse to just treat everyone else. Like, thank you. Well, I guess the the simplest thing I could say is what he said himself. He said, "I treat every every human being like a dog, and every dog like a human being, and it works out." Right. <laughs> like, people like dogs, and dogs like people. Right. Exactly. And um, when we first got into your life, and all of the complications arriving around divorces and all of those things. Um, into the Great Meadows came the Thundering Herd. <laughs> and the Thundering Herd thundered. 
Uh, we were responsible for the for the disposition of at least one Irish maid and one black maid. <laughs> um, and then uh, after they came back from their honeymoon, it was, wait a minute. We better start treating these children like dogs and these dogs like children. And so up went the, you know, the demerit and, and uh, the demerit board, the, 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 stars. <laughs> the stars, you know, it was, it was the, uh, it was the rules. The fishing and pole at dinner. The I remember the fishing pole, pole yeah. yeah. The fishing pole at dinner. Um, <laughs> and Did you mother. Eat that too? Yeah. Oh, oh, you yeah. got it too. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. good. It came back out. Because mother had been so bruised by my father that she went, oh, God, you know, you shouldn't do that. And then, no, no, I'm going to finish. I don't care. Um, the fishing pole at dinner, we were delighted with. It was, yeah, it was a little, like, a little slap on the wrist, and that was fine. Decaf, please. Um, it was fine. Mother was like, oh, my God, that's, that's what, Coffee. that's please. what our father please. used to regularly. Abuse. It was abuse. No, no it wasn't it abuse. Wasn't it was like trip. I'm it paying attention to you, and it was. I'm watching greatest, what you're doing. It was the greatest thing he he could have possibly done. Yeah. Now, one little through, personal right? story. Yes. One little personal story regarding Dick. Dick, my He's era. Hello, and and that's this. Uh, five days before my own graduation at Middlesex, I was expelled for smoking cigarettes in the wrong place at the wrong time. And real cigarettes too. Cigarettes? Yes. Real cigarettes? <laughs> <What>? Yes. <laughs> they were. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, he was in the headmaster's uh, den. No, no, the guy had a whole uh, had a whole anyway, he had a whole house. Anyway, um, Dick was going, "What the hell?" What are you thinking? And I went, well, I don't know. I, I don't know. It was sort of, I was rebellious or something odd. There. But three days later was John's um, graduation from from Fenn School, to which I attended. At the same day that I was supposed to head off to the college to which I was supposed to attend, which I was going to attend. Without a diploma. <laughs> without a diploma. I'm a high school <laughs> graduate with a college degree. However. When Dick let me go that day, he went, "Okay, Mikey, give it another, give it another bang." <laughs> and it was like the most affirmative thing I had ever encountered in my life. Even though I had done uh, something that I thought was hugely unforgivable, hugely well, unforgivable. Criminal of the universe is a smoker. So. Yes, but it was more than it was more than that. It was like I'd gotten expelled, and okay, you broke the rules. Well, I didn't know. Uh, yes, I knew that I had broken the rules. I just didn't know how how huge that would have been in my own biological father's eyes. But for Dick, it was okay, Mikey, give it another go. Yeah. <laughs> On you go, and he did that all the time, over and over. You never over and over. 